Okay, guys, this is actually a dream come true. I'm interviewing uh, Bob Doy from The Secret, the hit movie The Secret, and I got his book right here, which I really love, and I've been um, I read it, and I, I think it's on point, and I think that it will help a lot of people uh, with the law of attraction who's struggling, who know the law of attraction, who study, who watch The Secret. Um, how are you doing, Bob? I'm doing great, Johnny. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for uh, doing this interview. Uh, you've been very kind and patient with me. Um, I would like to uh, let you, can you introduce yourself, who you are to the audience, please? Sure. Well, like you said, I'm one of the featured, I'm best known as one of the featured teachers in The Secret, all about, it's a movie about the law of attraction, which then became a book. And before The Secret came out, I had been teaching the law of attraction about three years or so online through the Wealth Beyond Reason program. And that was the basis of the book. And, you know, I got into this because I was on my own search for satisfaction, mostly in career. You know, we spend so many hours a day doing this, what we may as well enjoy it. And I really wanted to. And I, and I also knew pretty much that I was, I was meant to be an entrepreneur because I, I like to have creative control over things and I don't like people tell me what to do. And, you know, I'm just not a good employee. Um, but, but I was struggling and, and basically the search for, for why was I struggling when I thought I was doing all the right things, you know, led me to eventually led me to what I later learned was, you know, how the law of attraction was at play in my life. And for me, my big aha moment was about the, the energy of my negative or, or limiting beliefs around money, which I, I really hadn't fully acknowledged at that time. But then when I learned a little bit about the quantum physics of our thoughts, that everything is energy. And then I could see where, oh, well, if I have this belief about, you know, money that it's hard to come by or whatever, then I can't be in alignment on an energetic level of attracting it. And that was the big aha for me because my brain needed that sort of scientific connect the dot. I couldn't just go with the, you know, new age woo woo sort of idea. I, I want, I would have loved to, but I, I, I just couldn't. So once I had that aha moment, um, I got very passionate about about sharing it with others. And so that was, you know, in a nutshell, how I put together the first Wealth Beyond Reason program, put it out online. And three years later, Rhonda Byrne, who created The Secret, you know, found that program as she was as she was researching law of attraction teachers. And the rest, as they say, is history. Oh, OK. Thank you. I was actually uh, thinking when you were researching this, uh, did you feel like uncomfortable telling others uh, about the law of attraction or did it seem crazy at, uh, at, at the moment? You mean like when, when I had my aha moments, how would I go then talk to people about it? Right. I went straight from having my aha right to an online program. I'd had some on, I'd, I'd had experience creating online communities in the fitness world. So I kind of just knew how to do that and I knew how to create, you know, digital products and things. So I just poured all of it into there. One of the reasons being is that you know, I, I didn't have to worry about how would people who I know perceive the change in me or the change, you know, I wouldn't have to deal with that, which can be uncomfortable. I just put myself out there because my aha moment and, and one of the key, one of the key things I talk about in terms of my story and how did this happen for me and all of that is that when I had my aha moment and decided that I was going to teach this stuff, what I did not do was aspire. Like I didn't go like, well, one day I hope to be as successful as, you know, Jack Hanfield or whatever. Like I didn't, I wasn't in this, this energy of one day I will. Instead I said, no, I get this now. So who I am right now is a powerful teacher of these concepts to as many willing open minds as possible. That's who I defined myself to be. Whether or not I had all the information that I would eventually have or not, that's who I decided, that's who I'm shifting into being. And when you, who you're being is, is, is uh, such a huge part of what you're putting out there in terms of vibration so that what you would attract. So if you're a spy, if you're always, if what you're being is someone who's trying to one day be, that is, that will perpetuate for a lot longer than it needs to. But you can just say, no, I'm this now. And then I spoke from in, with integrity with everything I could in that moment. But when I made that statement to myself in the universe, uh, this is who I am. It just started. I just started getting these downloads. I mean, literally, like so much information was coming to me. I couldn't write it down fast enough. And I was the, the, the Wealth Beyond Reason program, which started as, you know, a few ebooks and a couple of audios that I put together quickly grew into this massive curriculum with all these follow-up seminars and coaching Q and A's and all this stuff, because it was just the information was coming so quick. So uh, I never was, 
the reason I'm not hesitant or awkward about about talking about the law of attraction, I don't go around in my everyday life and and I'm not an evangelist for it. Like I don't I don't beat people over the head with and say this is how you should. In fact, when I'm out and about and people ask me what I do, I kind of dread the question because it's like, uh, do I really want to get into this can of worms? Because I like to talk to people who are really open minded and willing to. I don't I'll never debate it with people if they're like, well, what about this? I'm like, you know what? I'm trying to have a a picnic today. I don't want to talk about this, whatever. Um, but when I'm, when I'm doing it, how I like to do it online through live streams or whatever, you know, I'm totally in my power and, and I don't, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. And, and I tend to attract exactly the right people and the people who do want to argue with me or do want to debate, they just fall to the wayside because I don't give them any of my attention or energy. I think I answered mm. about five questions there, but you know, yeah, it's okay. I know. I like. Uh, I, I was uh, into uh, listening to your story actually. Um, you said download. What, can you define download? What do you mean by download? It's yeah. Like, okay. So are you in tune? Yeah, you know how sometimes you just you just know stuff. Like you just get. I mean, it's intuition basically. I mean, the way that I define intuition, which is this word that is used a lot in this conversation. Uh, is it's it's any communication from the universe. So we're we're communicating to the universe all the time. Right now, you and I are sending out a vibration, and we're saying this is what is. All right, that that's basically what we're sending out there. And so, the and the universe is always responding instantaneously to everything because we're there's no disconnect. We are the, in this the same ocean of energy as everything else. So so we have a thought, and the universe responds, and that response. Can come to us in many different ways but if we're saying i want if we're just telling the universe i want this whatever this is the universe is going to respond and you're getting and you're in the feeling like i have this now then what the universe does is automatically respond to bring you into alignment with that as 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 a reality um and now i'm trying to remember why i went down that road you have to get me back on track uh, I was talking about intune or download uh, intuition, right? Intuition. So, so that information about like what action to take now. You know, if the if if you say this is what I want in my life, and then a situation shows up, an opportunity to take action or have a meeting or write a book or whatever comes to you, that that's kind of that's kind of your intuition. That's what's you know, it's that knowledge that is coming to you, in as a in a response to whatever you're putting out there. And I call it downloads just to put it in a you know, in, into a, a, a way that people can understand, you know, you download information from the internet, it was over there, now it's in here. So I'm just, all this, this truth about how things are would just download and literally like want to flow through me. Some people could call it channeling. There's so many different ways you could put it. I, I kind of avoid, I try to avoid any of the language that is associated strictly with like new age concepts and all that, not because I'm against it, but because a lot of people who are like me skeptical kind of just normal everyday people who wouldn't normally look at that conversation i don't need them turning off the conversation just because i'm using a term that they're uncomfortable with because the fact is it's all science regardless of how we label it so i try and use language that is generic and accurate as possible you know so when i talk about energy and vibration in my courses and group coaching you know we, we take some time on talking about what that really is and what it's not so that people don't have this fairy tale idea of what the law of attraction is and how it works Right. And when it comes to um, the intuition, how did you came by the intuition? Because I have to develop mine. Uh, mm -hmm. You heard about where the uh, spiritual awakening, um, I had that moment in 2013, you know, I saw the secret, but I was trying to understand it. And I tried to create vision board, but I wasn't successful until I it clicked into me when I believe that wholeheartedly that if I believe that the universe will bring you know the circumstances it will come it's just that the vision board wasn't for me some people I don't know how yeah well, so well the, the vision board and all of these other tools that we talk about they're not they're not magic right they what they're designed to do is to move you into vibrational alignment with what you want so so it, it needs to generate the emotion that is congruent with the with the fulfillment of that desire if it does not if you just look at it and feel nothing or if you look at it and go how am i ever going to get that or that's too big or where is it that might you don't want that's not the signal you want it's it's just supposed to be a tool that triggers you into the feeling of now this is what you know that and if it's not if it's not doing that it's not serving its purpose the how did i learn intuition that's a great question because you know you don't know at first we're not we're, we're not for the most part we're not trained in any of this to follow our passions to hear communication from the universe and all we're just not 
you know, we're not trained on any of that. So the way that I decided to, to the, the biggest, I mean, it was following my intuition that took me from, you know, getting all lost and why is nothing working to leading me to the information that led to the aha moment, uh, you know, in the law of attraction. So it was all about letting go of trying to figure things out. So I had been struggling for months. Why isn't this business working? Why is no one buying this? Why, da, 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 why, why? So all in my head, wasn't getting anywhere. But I had been learning so much about all of this and this, co this concept of sort of giving it up to the universe and, you know, all of that. And I didn't know exactly what that, exactly what that meant because I'd never intentionally done it before. But, but what I decided to do is be very clear on what it is that I wanted, first of all, and not what I didn't want. I, I, I woke up at some point and realized, wow, I'm really focusing on what I don't want. Like, you know, I'm trying to create a vision, but it's all based on this because I don't want this. I don't want this. And that vibration, that emotion is permeating everything I'm doing. So it's no wonder nothing's changing. So it was about, okay, let's, let's forget about this. What do I really want to feel? So it was like my vision was basically built around, I want a career that I absolutely love, where I can stay at home, where I make good money, and you know, I can, I can express myself creatively. So I wasn't sure what that was going to look like exactly. And then I decided, so the, me trying to figure it out in my head isn't working. Every, every idea I have isn't working. So what do I do? If, I, if, if this intuition thing is right, then I'm going to be, what I'll, what I'll see, what will come to me is something totally different right? Than my normal thought process, right? So if, if it felt familiar, like, oh, I should do this, I, I would ignore that. But if it was something different, I was like, okay, so I'm, I, I have set a different vision for myself than focusing on the problem. So if I'm focused on something different, my experience of reality should be different. So I'm looking for things that are different than my everyday. And, and what happened in my case was I was at some networking event and this, this gal and I were talking about something and she brought up uh, angels, the topic of angels and, and that she knew somebody who painted angels. Now I'm not an angel person. I don't collect little angel figurines or anything like that. But years before when I was in radio, I'd seen some book that had some really interesting pictures of angels, illustrations. I, it was just fascinating, the artwork. So that, so we had this conversation about angels and I realized this is very different for me. I'm just going to continue this. And, and then long story short, angels just started showing up everywhere not real angels, but you know, figurines, pictures, statues, that whole thing. And I would just notice them. And if I saw like one in a store, I would go in and say, what is in here for me? Right. And that is what really led to a sequence of events of meeting people where I could, they'd set me up to do an event. And then I met a person through there and we had coffee and he talked about a book, blah, blah, blah. And, and I was led to, to, to the information. If I hadn't had that angel conversation, if I had just blown it off and said, you know, well, what the angels, this is, this clearly isn't it. This isn't my intuition because this has nothing to do with what I'm wanting. If I had done that, I never would have gotten, or it would have taken longer or whatever to finally get to where I had that aha moment. I mean, it really was pivotal. If I hadn't done that, I would not have met the people I needed to meet to lead me to the book that woke, that turned on the lights and we wouldn't be talking. So, but it was about just noticing and trusting and not trying to over intellectualize and go, well, wait, how, how is that going to work? Cause if we do that, then we're basically saying we've requested information from the universe. It comes to us. And then we're saying, no, thank you because it doesn't make sense to us. You know what? It shouldn't make sense to us because the things that make sense to us have gotten us in this position that we're now trying to change. So we have to be open to new information, new ideas and move. And it's going to be uncomfortable because we're looking for something bigger and better. And so we're going to have to, if, we, if it was in our comfort zone, we'd be having it. So we have to re be ready to experience discomfort and, and take some action on things that we don't necessarily can, we don't necessarily understand why we're doing it, but we trust the process. Right. And I totally agree with you. Um, and I'm going to ask you this question, but I totally agree with you where, uh, cause I see this a lot with a lot of uh, people who are into a lot of attraction. They read the book, but they're not getting the result, you know? And I believe that they they have fear. You know, we don't they don't dive deep too much on fear. You know, I have fear actually. I have lots of fear when I come to you. I actually have fear when I try to reach out to you. I have fear when I have try to reach out for either Bob Proctor or really high CEO. I have fear. But the problem was that I was attacking my fear. I, even though I was afraid, I was going towards. And you know, so many people are afraid to go for what they want. And I'm asking. Yeah. I, I would like to ask you. Were you ever, you know, afraid? Yes. Uh, petrified. I delayed so many key actions in my life out of fear 
it's ridiculous. I, 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 you know, fear leaving a job to go pursue my dreams, fear leaving a marriage that didn't need to be happening, you know, all sorts of stuff that I was paralyzed with fear, even, even knowing what I know. So look, we all have, we, we all have that fear and resistance. And, and really a lot of this work is, is getting, is, is basically dismantling that stuff. I mean, we're going to have fear, just like you said, you have fear, but you know what? You're taking action anyway, and that's how you move past it. You, you, you're going to, at some point, it's not going to be scary for you to send tweets to people a thousand times to get their attention because you, you're going to realize this works and I'm going to serve people as a result of doing this. So, you know, if they get annoyed, that's them. Right. So you'll you'll start to own that and the fear will subside. But then eventually something else will make you scared because you're going to get up against a comfort zone. So we, we all face fear all the time. It's about what do we do with that fear? Do we let it paralyze us or we do or do we just take it as a signal that oh, we've reached a comfort zone thing? Time to just plow on through. So, I mean, that's hard to start doing because it's well, because it's scary, <laughs> you know, but but, you know, the greatest freedom lies on the other side of stepping through that fear. Yes, thank you so much for uh, making it clear. Because um, I listened to your interviews, and uh, I will make it clear. And wait, did we ever actually get on why you created this book? The reason I, I, the honest reason that I created the book was because I had been doing the program for a couple of years. I was asked to speak on a cruise, and I had nothing to give them, you know, because my program is digital, and I wasn't going to go give out URLs, right? So I thought, well, I'll just take, I'll, I'll write something quick you know, to summarize my thoughts. And then a lot, half of that book, the technical support part, um, is all a transcript from a lot of those follow-up seminars that are part of the program that were part of those downloads and stuff. So I, I literally quickly put that together for a cruise and self-published it. Um, it's since now the, the version that you're, that you're holding is actually a second edition that was more recent and has been cleaned up a great deal and, and is, a, I think, a much more polished product. Um, but it's the, it's basically the same book. I, I love it though. I really love it. Like I really love it. Like when I read it, I was like, "Wow, this is great." I gotta get his message out there. Like this needs to be said because you know what you said was right, uh, true. Because um, I, I would like to focus on a little bit on law of attraction. Like what is actually causing people to not to be able to achieve their dream because I want to be able like to inspire them on this. Uh, yeah. Video. Well, so, you know, what we're talking about, again, the basics of, of making the law of attraction work for you, because it's always going. And yeah, a lot of it is, is just uh, people are approaching it with this weird mindset. Like it's a tool that they turn on and off and activate and do right or wrong or whatever. The law of attraction is much bigger than that. It has nothing to do specifically with us attracting our, the life of our dreams. It, it's really referring to how energy works in the universe and how it all comes together. And as we as human beings, how do we interpret the rest of the, anyway, it's, it's more complex than that tool. So, I mean, then, then it being just some little personal development toy, but, but the idea is, you know, if you want to experience something, you need to move in, into vibrational alignment with it. Now we're all in vibrational alignment with whatever we're experiencing right now, whether we did it consciously or not, most of the time it's 99% unconscious. You know, we, we're just going on autopilot. We're in total reaction mode with our life with a little bit of intention thrown in, you know, to, to get us through our day. But really we have so much, we have such a greater ability to control this if we just know about it. But what we, but we don't, what we learned is our limitations. What we learned is, you know, belief systems that talk about what we can't do. And so as a result of that, and, and that the, we, because we are wired that way, we have emotional states that are congruent with those limiting beliefs. Therefore, that's what we're sending out. Therefore, that's what we're going to attract. So just learning about the law of attraction or watching the secret or reading the secret, that's a great first step. But and just but you can't just throw up a vision board or do a, a, a meditation and expect it to necessarily to work if you've got years of limiting beliefs around whatever that you've got, because that's wired into you. It's it's real energy and it doesn't just go away. You, you know, but there are ways to deal with it. And that's what we deal with in all of our programs and all just how do you release that energy? How do you get rid of the resistance so that you can then move yourself? Because that resistance is literally acting like a force field. You can concentrate and meditate and vision board all day long, you know, and, but still, if you've got this limiting belief or you're going, well, where is it? I hope this works. I bet you this doesn't work. If that's what you're, you have to be really clear on what you're really sending out there. 
because you can talk a good game and post inspirational quotes and do all be that, you know, out there like that. But if you have still got your crap in there and you're not acknowledging it because you think, well, I can't look at that negative stuff because law of attraction. Well, I can guarantee you you're not getting the results you want and you're probably walking around disillusioned at the law of attraction. Why isn't it working? Well, because you haven't cleaned up the mess yet. You know, and it and it can take some time. We've got we've had our whole lives to adulthood or whatever till we till we wake up to this that we've created just these these programs and they and they are literally hardwired into our brain. <clears throat> and so you have to start giving it new information so that you can rewire and thus your emotional responses can be different and and, and all of that stuff. So it takes some effort, but the thing is, is that it's it's totally worth it. The amount of time that it can take to undo a lifetime is such a small percentage and then you can get back on track and actually create what you want. But if you refuse to do it, you know, I don't have that kind of time. I can't, I don't have time to meditate or I'm not going to buy a program. I'm not going to take coaching. I'm not going to, then you've made your choice. You've declared to the universe that you're not worth it. If that's, if that's really what you're, if that's what you're thinking, I'm not going to invest this much time to learn this, you know, then, then okay. That that's the choice you've made. But a lot of people get to the point where I'm not, I can't do this again another day. I must live into my potential. I must follow my passion or what's the point, right? And so those are the people I really like to talk to because I'm, if you've seen my stuff, you know, I'm super passionate about this. And I really, really want people to wake up and realize that if they've got a passion to do something, that they are here to do that. That's why they've been instilled with it. And everything that they're being told about why they can't do it is coming from the outside and it has nothing to do with truth. I don't care what you, what, what rationalization you give me. You know, it's it, there. You can look out in the world and see too many examples of people whose situations are so much more impossible than yours will ever be, who have reached tremendous amounts of success. And it isn't luck. It's, it's who they decided to be. It's how they put themselves out there. It's the conviction with which they live their lives. That is attractive. And, it, and, and, and not just with, to people, but to circumstances and situations that will, that will propel you in that direction. But if you are living in this sort of, well, I wish I could do this kind of stuff, that's a very weak, namby-pamby uh, vibration. And your results are going to be that way. And you're going to go around telling people that the law of attraction doesn't work when it's actually working perfectly. You are, it is exactly responding to where you are emotionally. And if you don't want to take responsibility for it, and if you want to say, no, well, I can't, how can I be happy? Because this and this and this and this, then you've given away all your power. So, you know, it's really, for me, it's about teaching people, look, <laughs> wake up, right? Who are you listening to? What is that voice? Where did that voice come from? That ego, the insidious piece of the ego that is telling you you can't do something because it, as a child you believed it when somebody told you a limiting statement you believed it and your ego is held on to that as truth or you got hurt sometime and your ego wants to 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 keep you protected and that's its job so anytime you start to to say i want something bigger and better for myself that means that you're going to have to be somebody different and your ego is all about your identity which means so if you threaten that identity, the ego thinks you're trying to kill it. And therefore, it will throw everything it has at you to stop you from moving forward. Every limb. Oh, you can't do this because remember you failed before. Oh, OK, that's enough. So if you aren't conscious of that, if you aren't aware that that's going to happen, what it sounds like is truth and reason and being rational and logical. That's what it feels like inside. You're right. I can't do that because what if all this? But that's all because it's just in here but you don't really take the time to go, where did that even come from? Why do I even believe that? Is there any truth to that? Well, that's, does that actually mean any, we don't, we don't ever even think about that because we're so programmed to just assume that it's truth. So that's why if you watch my stuff, it's all about, Hey, be very aware of what's going on up here. Right. And uh, I like what you're like really saying. I was really, uh, I was getting, when, when you were saying, I was like, Whoa, I'm getting goosebumps. Right. And, <laughs> And, and what do you think about, like, the ideas of societies and, you know, parents and teachers, you know, you, you uh, uh, say, say a lot about programming. Like, the, what do you think about the ideas that they uh, input into our mind? No. Well, here's the thing. For the most part, all those people are doing the best they can, and they've got their belief systems, which they acquired the way that they acquired them through their parents and all this. So we're dealing with 
it's like, for the most part, parents are not trying to limit us. They're not trying to, to have us not live our dreams. They're trying to protect us or whatever. So they'll say limiting things. Don't get your hopes up or that's for, or some parents will just, I mean, some parents will, they'll just squash the dreams of their children because they didn't get to have their dreams. I mean, there's a whole wide range of, of reasons that, that, that people do that, but it really doesn't matter because when it comes down to it, if you, if you wake up, if you become conscious, of, of the fact that limiting beliefs are always something from the outside and have nothing to do with truth, then you can start to be more conscious about replacing those beliefs with something that actually serves you. And, and actually being compassionate to those people who had those limiting beliefs that, that, that they thrust upon you. You know, Again, when it comes down to it, most people are doing the best they can. That doesn't always show up very good, you know, like to a third party. That doesn't look like the best they could, but maybe it was the best they could. Cause they've got whatever stuff they've got going on, you know? So it, it, it's just understanding that, uh, you know, in, in some cases, sure, there is indoctrination going on and they're trying to get you to think something else. It's just about waking up. It's just about waking up and being able to discern, does this piece of information work for me? Does it empower me or does it disempower me? If it disempowers me, I'm throwing it out. End of story. Because you're going to get information from all over the place. Some of it's BS, some of it's great, some of it's opinion, some of it's... So, you know, so you just go, does that empower me or not? If it, if it doesn't, why would I take it on? Why would I walk around carrying around energy that is disempowering? Even if it just, it feels true or whatever, when there's so many empowering thoughts you could have. So. Yeah, that is, that is true. That, that is truly, uh, yeah, empowering thoughts. And... And this is uh, tied into your book. Um, you often say that too many people are chasing wealth, right? And to be able to afford their dream. And I'm, and I would tie to your, I would ask uh, both questions, but can you really uh, uh, chase your dream without the wealth? And to the second question is, uh, what is your passion in life? Okay, well, there's that's two wildly different questions. So if I forget the second one, yeah. just just re remind me. Um, so we need to we need to look at the word wealth because I probably didn't say too many people are chasing wealth. I might have said they were chasing money, okay? Because it's a, one of the first things we do in that book, as I recall, is what what is wealth to you, right? You know, it's not a dollar amount, you know. And and I really even har I hardly ever even talk about wealth that much anymore because it's it's really. Um, the quality of your life because people too, too much, they equate it with the money and they get attached to, well, I need the money to, to create the, the situation that's going to make me wealthy. And that's just, it's focusing on a means to an end. And the, the problem with that is a lot of people have a lot of issues with money, right? And so if that's what you're focused on, you're, you're dealing with layers and layers of resistance to potentially go through. Yes, you should eventually get through them. But it's not necessary because what you're going for really is not the money. It's what the money is going to get you. It's the, the feeling that you're going to have when the money facilitates the, in your mind, facilitates the, the manifestation, if you will, of your goal. But see, that's you trying to figure out how you're going to make it happen. And that's the hard way. The best way is to just get clear on the feeling. What does that look like? What does that feel like? And then follow your intuition and see what happens in terms of making it happen. It may be that, yes, you attract a lot of money or whatever money you need to go make this happen. Or you could attract people who are so in line with your vision that they support you in it or whatever. So, so like you, if you, if it, if you, if you um, focus in on the money is the way, then that is just one way of literally an infinite number of ways that the universe could deliver it. But in your mind, the limited mind, well, you have to have money to buy these things because that's what we've learned. But the fact is stuff that we can't explain, people get financed, people, things happen all the time that have nothing to do with them making the money. So it's about being open to all possibilities, right? So the wealth, if you want to, if you want to use the wealth as the word wealth, just means that overall wonderful feeling that you're looking for at the other end of this manifestation of your vision. So, you know, it's, I, I, I never have people chase the money uh, because it's, okay. it's just too much stuff. Okay. Um, what is your uh, passion in life? Cause I know that you're into VRs. VR. Yes. Ukulele playing puppies. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It and and you know um, 
it's really, I think if I was going to creative expression, it's creative self-expression. You know, that's what I have always craved. And that's why I went, originally I wanted to get into radio when I was younger. And I did that. And, and as soon as I was in a place where I really couldn't express myself because I was kind of low on the totem pole, went to a, a major market and I had years of work I would have to do to really be able to do the show I wanted to do. And I just got disillusioned. So I, I left that. And so I went into computers and, and it was multimedia computers. So now there was graphics and sound. I could use my voice. So it was a little closer, but everything I do has to allow me to express myself creatively or I am out of there. And that's what happened in my job right before I quit it. It was just like this, I'm dying here. Right. And so now obviously with, with the technology that we have and live streaming and, you know, being able to do stuff like this and, and I get to do, just all of it. I can I can live stream. I can broadcast. I can do voiceover. I can play the ukulele. I can hold the puppy all in one sitting, right? And talk about the law of attraction and help people. So you know, it's just a golden time for somebody who has these types of passions. But but the key is that I try to honor them all. Like a lot of people go, well, I I I'm, I want to do so many things. How can I, you know, how can you just find a way that they gets attached to, well, I can't make money doing that. I can't make money. Stop with the money. Do the things because you love to do them. And then let's see what happens. You know, as soon as we start attaching, well, I'm not going to play the ukulele if I can't get paid for it. Well, then you're just robbing yourself of the joy of just playing the ukulele. And who knows if you really played it out there in a big way and shared it. Who knows what could happen in terms of revenue or an opportunity, right? But you just do it because it's there to do it without the attachment that it has to, you know, you got to get any sort of feedback, whether financial or otherwise. You do your passion because it, it, because when you're doing it, time stops, you feel great, you're in the flow, forget whether you're getting paid for it or not, you know? Right, but um, there's also where a point where, you know, if you're like, I think you know this too, uh, where you get to study, you know, a little bit about business, and there's where they said you can't do, you can't be to all, uh, all things to everybody, you know, like the, you know, niche. Oh yeah, and, absolutely, absolutely. And and look, so like I say, most people know me as you know for law of attraction. That's that's the main. That's like revenue wise. It's career wise. That's you know, but I am not at all shy about sharing other aspects of my creativity with my law of attraction audience anymore. And, 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 and that works for me because now they know me even more. It creates a more, a more a legitimate authentic. connection. Authentic. Right. Authentic. That's what I think. Yeah. Right. It's just like, I'm not just, and, and I struggle with it for a long time, right after the secret, especially of just being Bob Doyle from the secret who had to talk a certain way and was expected to, to do things in a certain way. And it was, and, and again, I started to feel suffocated. So then this past year when I started doing the Bob Doyle show and then doing the law of attraction Q and a with silliness and, and, and just all kinds of fun, but still delivering the content, um, in a way that works for me, you know, that was just, that was perfect. So yes, you, you can't like be all things to all people. So clearly I, I have narrowed my audience to, at least for a while because if people knew me as just generic Bob Doyle from the secret and that all they want from me is law of attraction stuff. And then I start doing all this crazy stuff. Well, they may say, well, that's just not my, I'm not into that. And I may lose them, but little by little, the word gets out the, the people who like the law of attraction and the silliness right now, I've got the perfect group right now. I can 100% be me. And so, yeah, it's a rebuild, but the, but the relationships are way better. And from a business point of view, you can't lose that way. You know, I really, you know, when I was watching uh, you on, you know, the uh, doing your shows and it was really, I, I really liked your personality. I, I'm glad that you're like uh, having fun and I can see that. And you, you do the, uh, what is that, uh, hologram, you know, comments and stuff. I like that, you know, even yeah. if that one person didn't like it, I like it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, yeah, I know. I like to try, I like to do the video tricks and regardless of what people say. Yeah, but oh, and we're talking about the subject because you know so many of the people, um, you know, who are starting to you know become aware of law of attraction. How can they deal with you know their negative friends? Do they what they do? Do they can you kick them out or do they what what can you do with that? This is a huge question, and uh, it's something that we spend a great deal of time on in coaching programs and things like that because relationships are huge. You know, when when we start to take on a different direction. 
uh, we change our, we literally change our vibration. And all the people who are around us in our lives right now are there because we've been in alignment with them. If we shift significantly our vibration, there, there's going to be a reaction and it's not always that great. You know, um, because now, you know, it, if, if we're going for something great, it may bring up the stuff in the people that we're around, you know, their own limiting beliefs, their own stuff, and they could make it very difficult for you. And then they're going to reflect back their own limiting beliefs at you and tell you all why it can't work and all of that. What's the most important thing to know is that 100% of the time, if you hear people neg being negative or whatever, it's about them. Now, you know, and that's that I'm, I'm just addressing if they say negative things to you. Now, if they're just negative people, right, about uh, the news and blah, 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 blah. You have to make a decision whether or not you're going to be around that or not, because, you know, it's very easy to get sucked into that. It's just not going to work for you to be a person who attracts wealth and happiness and joy and all of this other stuff and be and can and, and then hang around all these people who are negative. So that means that sometimes relationships evolve. Sometimes we have to let people go and the reason and but but the and, and while we've got we've been trained to think that that's sad or oh what a shame eh, you know they're not it's not if it's not serving you if it's not moving you forward if it's not empowering you then you have to really look at what is this relationship about history years you know does that does that just because I've known someone or they've been in my life for this long that means I have to have them in there forever even if it's negative if it makes me feel bad no right no. And that includes family, by the way. Sorry, but um, you know, so so, but but once you start owning the new you, you'll attract a whole new group of people, and they support you. They cheer you on. You you get to be with them, and everybody's uplifted, and you won't even you won't miss that other stuff anymore. You may have memories of yeah, I remember when it was fun, but you're not going to want to go back into the negative space again once you understand what it's like to be with a bunch of positive people. But th th that transition can be emotionally difficult and that's why you know that's why you know you want support you want support you want tools to deal with that emotion so that your ego doesn't come in and say it's not worth all this pain go back to the old way because that's what happens to most people right thank you so much for making that clear that that uh, i want to help uh, my um you solve a lot of people problem with that one thank you um i actually want to get this um answer like how do you set your goals do you set your goal high or low well, you don't set them low because if you set them low, you're telling, you're basically telling the universe, I don't deserve what I really want. So I'm going to shoot low. So no matter what, whatever that is, you're going to get lower than that. So no, you don't. I mean, people will say, be realistic. The, the only reason I would tell people to be realistic or people would say, be, be realistic about your goals is if they're attaching to a specific thing. Like if you say, uh, I, okay, I want to try, I want to think big. So I'm going to try and attract uh, $150 million, right? And then someone might say, be realistic. Well, the reason is, is because you're attaching to something that you're probably going to have so much resistance about $150 million. How am I ever going to, that, that you're just going to stop yourself vibrationally. Again, think huge, but don't think about like the means again, the, the, you know, what's the feeling? You can't think a big enough feeling. There's no such thing as feeling too happy. There's nothing, there's no such thing about un, being unrealistically, you know, loving or whatever. It's just about the stuff or the means. And that's what triggers people, people to tell you, stop, you know, be realistic. Right. I mean, like, I'm uh, sorry. I'm asking you, like, how you set your goal. Cause oh, I, me personally. Me personally. Well, I don't yeah, set right. low. No, I don't set low. I mean, I, it's, you know, oh, I, I, you. I, I think about what, what is it that I really, really want to feel? And what might that look like? And I say, what might that look like? Because it, it may end up looking like something different than what I've got in my head. What I've got in my head is a way, it's like a vision board. It's like a mental vision board. You know, it's like it, what it does, what my vision does is it, 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 it triggers the feeling I really want to feel. And the universe can then give me exactly what will make me feel that way. It may or may not be the thing in my head. The example I use all the time is in that book that you're reading. I talk about going to see a house and I use that and, and, and it was a house on the lake and it was all this great stuff. It seemed perfect. We ended up in a different house and I ended up learning later that that house on the lake had mold damage. That would not have been in alignment with what I wanted in a home, right? So I, I had a feeling of the freedom and the space and all of that. And that's what I ended up getting with the home that we ended up in. 
But if I had ended up in the lake house because I had forced it and said, no, it has to be this one, it has to be this one, well, I would have been dealing with a very expensive and yucky mold problem. So you're saying that we should be flexible because we can, our goals can change and be flexible, right? We have to be, yes, our goal, our vision will evolve as we move through a comfort zone and then settle into a new one. Most likely, will our natural tendency will be for it to expand. And also, sometimes when we have a vision, it gets us to a certain degree. And now, now that getting to that point now allows us to expand our vision even more. And it may take us off into a completely different direction. But it, but it, we never would have gotten there if we hadn't taken that, that that first set of steps. That's why it's all about trust and following and enjoying the process, enjoying the journey. Yes, I'm actually enjoying this journey right now. <laughs> um, uh, this one, um, what does success look like to you? I, you know what? I, it's just about be freedom. You know, I, that's the big core thing for me. Doing what I want to do when I want to do it. You know, I, I, you know, I'm kind of a brat in some ways about like scheduling stuff. Just don't tell me I have to be at a certain place at a certain time. I've gotten over it a good bit because now I schedule all these, you know, interviews and coach, coaching things. But for the most part, I really like to have the freedom. So it's about creating a lifestyle, career, whatever, otherwise, where I truly just get to do what I want to do when I, when I want to do it. And when I, when I find myself getting into a situation where I oh, look, I'm doing something I don't want to do anymore. I, it, it affects all areas of my life and I have to figure out a way to, to, to stop doing it. And a lot of times that's just about delegation or, or saying, you know what, I'm just not, I'm just not going to do this anymore because it, it drains my energy or whatever. Like, you know, for the longest time I stopped sending email completely to my list, right? Because it's like, they're annoyed. I'm not having fun with it. You know, I'm not going to send it anymore. I know I'm supposed to do that because that's how you run an e-business. But I'm, you know, nobody wants this and it's not fun for me to send it. So I, so I just started doing live streaming, which is so much better. I limit my audience tremendously to people on Facebook right now, right? For now. Um, but, but, the, but I'm, ha I'm getting more satisfaction out of it than I ever have. And that's pretty much the point. And I know for a fact that the people that I'm helping through group coaching, which we do in a, the same live streaming format, they're getting my best work I've ever, ever done. They're getting faster transformations, more, you know, just more powerful, long lasting stuff. Um, you know, they've got the support and the whole thing. So it's, it's, it's perfect uh, where I am right now. Well, that's great. I'm happy for you. I, I, I can, when you say it, I can hear you're um, very happy in that place. So yeah. where, where can we actually find you? Um, so I'm all over the place, but the best way to the best place to to start would be boundlessliving.com. Um, that's the the name of my company, Boundless Living, and there basically you can link out to just about everything I do. You know, I've got a, a YouTube channel filled with law of attraction information. I have a whole playlist of the archives of my live law of attraction Q and A stuff that I do on Facebook. You can go to Facebook and participate in those when I do those. Uh, you know, I've got my books. I've got the, the Wealth Beyond Reason program. I have the group coaching that I offer every now and then. Uh, we're in session right now, so that's not open. But, you know, everything can basically be found there. So if you get there, uh, there is an option that, you know, you could, anyway, you'll see. It's obvious. It's a website with information on it. Boundlessliving.com. There's lots to be, lots there. There's, you can download an app uh, with Law of Attraction information or the Bob Doyle stuff. It's just, there's so much there. Yes. Thank you so much for doing this interview. I'm very grateful for you taking the time. Um, I'm actually happy to do this, um, uh, to be able to interact with you like this. And thank you so much. Well, I'm glad we finally got it done. It was great talking to you. Yeah, you too. All right. Thank you for watching so much. For uh, I hope this helped you, and I hope that you know you get to manifest or hit solve your problem of law of attraction. Thank you. Subscribe to my channel, like my video, and I'll see you next time. See you, Bob. See you. Bye bye.